Hey, I'm Nick Byrne, welcome to Pocket for Wednesday, the 23rd of March. Today on the show, Wii U on its deathbed, Minecraft 98, and the internet rises up to slap down a bird. The bird is goose. All right, here's what's been making headlines. Sony announced overnight that they're shutting down MotorStorm and Drive Club developer Evolution Studios. This probably won't come as much of a surprise to those of us who have followed Drive Club's objectively abysmal life since it launched in October of 2014. Sony released a statement which reads, Regular reviews take place throughout SCE Worldwide Studios. As part of this process, we have reviewed and assessed all current projects and plans for the short and medium term and have decided to make some changes to the European studio structure. As a result, it has been decided that Evolution Studios will close. It is regrettable that this decision will lead to compulsory redundancies. Where possible, we will try to reallocate people onto other projects. And Scribblenauts developer Fifth Cell has laid off staff after the cancellation of their in-development Scribblenauts Fighting Words. Overnight, 45 staff were let go. According to Fifth Cell's creative director, Jeremiah Slaska, the cancellation of the iOS port by publisher Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment came unexpectedly. He said, it happened so quick, we're not sure what the plans are going forward yet. Sucks to see game studios suffering, but here's a few game announcements to ease the hurt. With the fifth episode of Minecraft Story Mode due out this month, Telltale have extended the series. They're adding three more episodes, which will be sold as DLC later this year. Telltale have also announced that they'll be releasing Season 3 of The Walking Dead before the end of 2016. Binding of Isaac developer Edmund McMillan has announced his next game. The Legend of Bumbo will be a randomly generated, turn-based RPG, which will continue the running theme of shit in its design, not in sort of the gameplay or mechanics. Unless one of the mechanics is throwing shit. In which case. In the announcement on the Binding of Isaac website, Macmillan teases that this new game could be directly related, but they'll drop more info in the coming months. Platinum Games Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan will be launching on the 24th of May. And Heart Machine's Hyperlight Drifter received a release date of the 31st of March on PC and Mac, with the console releases due later this year. I'm joined now by Goose to discuss our final news story. According to reports from Japanese newspaper Nikkei, the Wii U will cease production by the end of this year. Nintendo's own figures put the lifetime sales of the Wii U at around 12.6 million worldwide since it launched in 2012. You're one of those people. I am. Have you got a giant tear right here <laughs> sort of saying goodbye to the Wii U? Oh, of, of course I'm sad that it's going, like any old piece of tech that now it is old now yeah <laughs> like any old piece of shit that's kind of useless whoa, it's sad whoa, to see whoa. it go and it was inevitable i mean yeah. it was never really soaring yeah. at any one point so of course it was going to go and now we've got you know there's so many rumors and announcements about the nx that we know at least nintendo has something else in their catalog that they're getting ready to drop yeah. hopefully the report does suggest that the the end of the production of the wii u will align with the release of the nx also i think it's important to note that it's it's just saying that they're going to possibly cease production of making the units, but that doesn't mean yeah. that the, they might have so many backed up. There could be warehouses full of the unsold yeah, things. That they now. actually go like with projected sales. We have two, three, four years worth of projected sales of this console sort of just stacked up in the Indiana Jones. And warehouse. then you yeah, you stack on top of that the idea that they're probably going to continue supporting it. They're stubborn Nintendo. Continue? Uh, like start? <laughs> yeah, they're Did you mean start? Maybe Did you start mean start support. supporting their console? They're going to just keep it on a slow burn a little bit like they did with the Wii. They yeah. still had a few Wii games coming out once the Wii U was out. And I think it's smart for any business to have some sort of crossover with their new hardware. Yes. And I have been bragging on the Wii U for pretty much my entire professional career. But there are some good games on it. I played Pokken Tournament today. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's today's episode of my uh, Nick Boy Play. And, and th that was a fun, good game. What I actually hope they do, if this is coinciding with an NX announcement that the NX hopefully will be backwards compatible yeah and so that they go okay we're gonna stop making the hardware the Wii U hardware which isn't selling amazingly but you can still buy all those old Wii U games all the ones that you know you own the five good ones and you can still use them on the NX and it's not sort of killing off I guess the the 
It's killing off the physical console, but not the idea behind it. Which does still make me sad, because it is the only thing under my TV that looks like a gaming console anymore. Every other console under my TV is soulless, it's just a black entertainment box. Yeah. Whereas the Wii U still has charm and character, and that little gamepad sits under there and occasionally makes a bloop noise when there's an update or a new game coming out, and that makes me happy. Yeah, Gaz has been happy the four times his console's gone blob. Alright, it's yeah. now time for the thing of the day. How are you gentlemen? Oh, your thing of the day belong to us. You are on the way to thing of the day. YouTube user Juraga1 managed to get Minecraft running on Windows 98, and I have never heard someone get that excited over a frame rate that bad. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm actually playing it. It's working! I jumped! It's working! Oh my god! <laughs> How are you, gentlemen? Oh, your thing of the day belong to us. You are on the way to thing of the day. All right, Goosey. Last night you spewed your opinion all over these fine people in Good Game IMO. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that opinion as a refresher? So the opinion was that people need to stop pre-ordering games mm -hmm. uh, because it is just marketing. It is just hype. Uh, I don't care if it comes with uh, a crappy plastic toy or a cloth map or early access to a beta or a, a weapon that you can use that only works for like five levels. Everyone's going to hate you. You don't need to pre-order. Just wait till the game comes out and just get some damn hindsight because you're just you're giving in to the, the marketing... I'm it, angry! It's so exciting! <laughs> it was great because it really did feel as though you really cared about I this do. issue. Yeah. I always have, but this one in particular does get my goat. And so a lot of people agreed with you. Alan yes, Twiner went as far as calling pre-ordering the worst thing that has happened in gaming. I hear, hear Alan. Yeah, obviously <laughs> Alan hasn't seen the Wii U. And John Paul Smith, who said pre-order culture is objectively bad for consumers and promotes bad business practices, with well, games yeah. releasing broken so frequently, why risk it? I mean, outside of just ranting there and being yeah. upset subjectively, yeah, he's right. It is something that only promotes the marketing side of the game development so heavily. It's that publisher focused, not game development. Exactly, and so we have had examples of games, uh, Aliens, Colonial Marines, Batman Arkham Knight, yeah. games where there are things that should have been fixed or the game should have been working or the game should have been better, mm. but they spent so much of their resources plugging that game and getting the marketing out there and, and getting people hooked on it before they even knew what they were getting, you know, mm. what they were getting in a game. And the result has left people burnt and I don't know why people don't now stop doing it. But people the next game gets announced, they have no idea. Down boys, down, and, down, sorry, down, sorry. down. This isn't this isn't T V again. Uh <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, I think that mo for most of the time, I feel like pre-ordering is not necessarily necessary, which is a good way to put that. Uh, <laughs> but shockingly, there were so many people who disagreed with you. Yeah. So let's start with Corey Johnston, or as I'm going to refer to him, the man who is single-handedly ruining the games industry. <laughs> Corey says, I only pre-order when I can get something like a map that won't come out for anybody else. For example, the only game I pre-ordered was Black Ops for Nuketown. Corey, that's the problem. Mm. Like, pre-ordering just so you can get something that other people don't have, in my opinion, is... That's why pre-ordering sucks, because it's going, give us the money now so that you can have this one thing, and we're gonna punish everyone else for not... Not just for not buying the game, but for not buying the game at the time when we want they them to buy the game. They weren't excited enough when they bought it. Exactly, yeah. I'm going to go even further and debunk Corey's theory by saying that all of this stuff will eventually be free or be available to people who didn't pre-order. I guess. Well, would you mind indulging me for one second? Go Let's ahead. Just Call of Duty Nuketown Map. Uh, an article written 16 hours ago. 16 hours, you say? Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Newtown map now free for all. Which just exactly proves my point that they, all the promises they make are eventually cave in and it just removes the value of any of this exclusivity. Yeah. Well, thanks for writing in, Corey. Don't stop watching. We love your support. Uh, moving on now. Now, Nathaniel Jackson uh, said something similar to Todd Withnail. Right. They both sort of said the same thing. I, I see their perspective here. So Todd said, personally, I live in a small town, so physical copies of popular games sell out fast. Mm -hmm. My internet is too slow for a digital copy, and I want to play it the day it comes out, so I don't want to order it online. 
they're usually not on time with the delivery. I don't play, uh, I don't pre-order many games, of course, just the ones I know I'll definitely want to play after plenty of research. So the argument there being, you, it might sell out because there's only, there's not even a game shop in your town. It's yeah. like an electronic shop that stocks some games and you want to play it as soon as it comes out to be part of the crowd. Yeah, I completely sympathise with that. And it, it almost fits in with what I was saying last night, which was, uh, back in my day, it was I can't mm. believe I'm saying that, but I used to have to do the same thing because there wasn't digital games, and game stores did have limited amounts. And in that case, yeah, I totally understand that. And I think, I think what the argument there is, and it's the same as something that Robert Warns uh, talks about, that he says that he pre-orders games that are niche titles, that mm -hmm. usually have low print runs, yep. stuff published by NIA. America or, Tec or Tecmo Koei. A recent example is Devil Survivor 2 Record Break. Oh, what a game. I've never even heard of that game, but he and he's never seen another copy aside from his. Yeah. So what they're talking about, I would say it's not even necessarily pre-ordering, it's it's actually just securing your copy. Yeah, that's pre-ordering is kind of putting your money down ahead of time, whereas this is, no, I'm making sure that I'm the person who gets this game because there is a limited amount. Yeah, and it sounds like, as they mentioned, they're doing a lot of research because they know that's why they want this game. Yeah. And I'm sure, as you said, it's less about pre-ordering and more to do with uh, importing or, yeah, yeah. or just finding a copy of some of these games. But which... your point was more about the rewards and stuff that you get for pre-ordering, the temptation to yeah, hand your money over. Yeah, it's that carrot on a stick that they constantly have there because the game is not enough anymore for some reason, when it should be. The game should be more than enough. Yeah. And they need to find ways to keep adding these tiny little sort of incentives on top of it and they just keep stacking up. Um, so yeah, a little different to, to yeah. those points, but still good points. Very good points, I, I do think. Uh, and another excellent point that came in from Emma Oxford. I still pre-order because I'm an impulsive sack of shit who is readily distracted by shiny things. I know it's bad. I'll quit one day. What do you have to say to Emma? Wow, uh, that's, that's brutal truth, Emma. Yeah. Um, look, there are people out there who. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> I like that you actually have you actually have a response to there, Emma. There are people who saying are, I'm an impulsive sack of shit. That um, she's you know metacognitive enough that she's aware of her yep. scenario. She likes she, new. Yeah, and the she's cult like of the new. she's aware of it. She's not buying into it in the sense that she feels like she is getting this exclusive content. She yeah. is aware that it is being sold to her as shiny crap. Yeah, and she likes the shiny crap, and she can admit to that. And I think you know, good more on power you, Emma. To you. Good on you, Emma. Uh, now we're going to move on to another point, which I had not thought of, and I appreciate her story for writing in. I still pre-order. I look at it like lay buying, but in advance. Mm. Make small payments before release, rather than a hundred plus done, uh, uh, rather than a hundred plus dollars dropped on release day, especially around September to November, where a lot of new games are coming out. Yeah, okay. I hadn't thought of that. No, neither. My response to that initially was, well, what you could do, and like because I'm trying to discourage you from pre-ordering, is put that money in a bank account and sort of build it up. But you know, for some people, and you know myself included, it's kind of hard to resist money just sitting there that's waiting to be spent. <laughs> uh, so this is actually ensuring that they can afford the games. In that case, yeah, some people, uh, as you mentioned, might not have that money straight away or on launch day or if there's a couple of games coming out mm -hmm. that they want to buy. So sure, but all you're really doing is flagging the games you're saving up for yeah. by giving them some money already. Yeah. And in my mind, I think you're spot on. You can still just flag those games in your head. You can keep browser tabs open and say, I'm saving up for that, I'm saving up for that. Yeah. And you put your money in a bank where it's earning interest versus it's sitting in some game store's account where they're earning interest off it. So which is really the smarter option? The first one. Correct. Uh, now moving on to James Lynch, who took umbrage with your casual dismissiveness of the value of toys. Ah. Uh, where James says mocking pre-order loot seems kind of moot when amiibo, pop figurines and services like Loot Crate are so popular. Right. What do you have to say to that? Because the internet was not happy <laughs> that you ragged on their, their figurines. Look, I've never been a big fan of collectibles in general. So Neither are we. No, of course <laughs> not. But what I would say is that those examples you make, amiibos and those pop vinyl figures, is that money is paid for that toy. Mm. And so you're well aware of what you're buying when you get it. Um, versus these are added as bonuses onto your games. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, you often end up coughing up more money for these figurines because you can only get them in collector's edition mm. pre-orders and, and they end up costing upwards of $200 half the time. Yeah, it's true. And I guess the difference there is you can totally assign value to, uh, oh, I want this figurine because that's cool and it looks cool. But there's no sort of level of quality that is assured so some of them are really good and some of them are really bad and yeah. not to keep bragging on Batman but the Batman Arkham Knight collector's edition we got some copies here 
the the figurine is atrocious. It's, it, it's like plastic. It, it, it you can see seams on it. It fell. Up, one of them just fell apart. As opposed to uh, there was a Witcher one, which was a great quality, sort of sturdy Geralt yeah. on a horse sort of thing. And you go, that feels worth my money. And this feels like it actually cost a dollar fifty to make, and you charge mm. me sort of an extra fifty. This is how it happened. This is how the Batman died. I think what your segment last night highlighted for me is that there are so many different reasons why people pre-order. And mm. it's not just kind of what I thought, which is to get the free map, to get Nuketown, which now I have for free as well, even though I didn't pre-order. There's toys, there's lay buying, there's securing copies, there's small shops in the middle of nowhere, there's slow internet. There's a, there's a heap of reasons why people pre-order. Yeah, some better than others, but there are a lot of yeah. reasons. You just had to put that final dig in there, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, but I feel like the reason that you and I are so impassioned and angry by this topic mm. uh, is nailed by Luke Mech, who says, if everyone pre-ordered their games, there'd be no need for gaming reviews or gaming programs. Goose and his self-interest. Yes, yeah, he has nailed your ego, my friend. <laughs> all right, that's it for today's episode of Pocket. My Pocketeers, thank you very much for sending in all your opinions. And if you would like to hear more of our opinions, then please suggest a talk-through topic for tomorrow in the comments below. And while you're on the internet, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? So you can talk about what you pre-ordered, then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can pre-order Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV, pre-order Pocket at Nick Boy, at Pierre, at GG, at Monkey, and at Sam Gee. He's at Goose Mangus, and there are links to everything I just said, and a link so you can buy it in the description below. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Sandra. Thank you very much, Sandra, if you've made a thing. Please send it in. Till tomorrow, Nick Boy out. Goose out. Did you barge going on about cloth maps last night? Yeah. That's like the worst pre-order bonus. I, I, I cannot think of a worse thing than to get like a physical map that I then need to do some, like blue tack on the it's wall. It's not even a map that you would hold openly. Cloth. Just sags. Yeah. And it just sags like you kind of join one of these while you're also trying to control the computer. What an idiot. <sighs>